today's social media segment is brought to you by Terrebonne General Health System. Your health is our legacy. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. And welcome to this edition of Bayou Time. I'm your host, Keith Weissheit, licensed clinical social worker with Terrebonne Home Care. Very glad you're joining us. However you may be joining us, we appreciate it very, very much. And, you know, we always like to bring to you these news stories, uh, especially as it relates to those people that uh, have dealt with or that we have to use law enforcement for. Very glad to have joining us through uh, the Morgan City Police Department, Captain John Schaff. John, thanks for joining us once again. Always glad to be with y'all. Yeah, we seem to be talking quite a bit here lately. No doubt. Yeah, I know a lot of things going on, but uh, as we mentioned yesterday, we, we knew that there was uh, this information that was coming to light. Uh, we thank you so very much for giving us another update of getting somebody else who's got uh, methamphetamines uh, through a traffic stop. Yeah, definitely our narcotics division has been hard at work uh, tackling drugs in, the, in Morgan City. Uh, shortly after that, that release we did yesterday uh, on July 17th, shortly after midnight, investigators with the narcotics division conducted a traffic stop, which uh, they came in contact with the driver, Nicole Jones, and a passenger, Brian DeRowan. Ultimately, uh, Ms. Jones was found to be in possession of a large amount of methamphetamines. Uh, the investigation continued, and they were able to obtain information that the two had traveled to New Iberia that evening and uh, purchased the methamphetamines and were bringing them back to Morgan City for illicit sales. Wow. Uh, and again, it's, it's always so good. You guys do such a great job of just trying to figure out what's really going on in the area and just so well equipped to be able to address those things. And no, here we see a shot. When you say these large quantities, uh, there's a lot of methamphetamines here. Yeah, I think the total weight was a uh, quarter pound, which uh, is, is a good bit of methamphetamines. And breaking it down, you could make multiple sales and uh, put that on the streets, which affect our community, community ultimately. Yeah, and this uh, also along with that, as you see pictured, is all this drug paraphernalia uh, that is used uh, to either share or administer uh, yeah, these so methamphetamines. No doubt, it's very common that uh, narcotic dealers are addicted to their product and uh, they'll, they'll go and pick up a large amount and they'll use some and they'll sell to others so they could get more. Yeah. So, uh, that, that's a common, uh, trait that we see with, uh, methamphetamine dealers that they are addicted to their product. So not only do they have the addiction, they also have a problem of putting this poison on our streets, right. but we definitely want to make sure we keep that out of the uh, community as much as we can. Yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll roll through those charges again. Uh, again, uh, Miss uh, Nicole was driving the vehicle. Uh, Daron was a passenger. Uh, but it looks like we have possession of Schedule 2 uh, CDS with the intent to distribute. Again, that's the methamphetamine. Uh, possession of the drug paraphernalia that was just shown. Uh, driving under suspicion and uh, of using and uh, window tint violation. Uh, that's something that's actually been a really big uh, concept to discuss about making sure that we're addressing those people with those heavy window tents that are not following the law uh, with that. And then Brian, Brian Joseph Durowin, 36 years old, uh, possession of Schedule 2 CDS with intention to distribute, and again, that methamphetamine. Uh, but again, just a, what could be just a normal traffic stop is because of the ability and, and your team and their training being able to recognize uh, some issues with that and really address that problem. Definitely. Part of narcotics investigations is having a proactive presence within the streets. Uh, so not only are you conducting the investigations that you receive information on, and uh, you, you have to have a proactive tactic to it, to where you're out there, because there's a lot of people riding around with illegal narcotics in their vehicle. So that present is able to quell uh, a lot of street issues that we have out here in Morgan City. So having these guys out here making these stops and, and taking a proactive approach to it really uh, makes it safer for the community to get this type of things off the streets. 
Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, Jay, put the uh, the map back up. We can kind of see uh, exactly where that stop was uh, there in Morgan City uh, as we, we see that they were on Garber Street, which is uh, right to the center of your screen there, uh, just off of, of the waterway. Uh, but again, in that area, and just, you know, Morgan City is a small town, but it's got a lot of different streets. And so it's rather a lot of people in one place. And so it's important for us to be vigilant. And so very thankful that, that your team was able to be able to go and identify that traffic stop and then uh, pick up on the issues to get those drugs off the street. No doubt. They do a good job out here keeping our community safe. And we want to commend them along with uh, everybody else we work with. You know, we, we closely work with a bunch of different agencies from Homa to Morgan City through St. Mary Parish to uh, tackle this problem. Even though the, the problems may be just outside of our city, uh, they end up ending up in our city. So uh, a collaborative effort is really important between the agencies to tackle this problem for all communities. Well, and like you mentioned, uh, the, these two individuals were traveling back from New Iberia. And so that is probably going to be something that they can identify as well with regards to issues. Uh, again, as the Morgan City Police Department, we're talking about the arrests of uh, Nicole Michelle uh, Jones, as well as Brian Joseph Duroen. Of course, Ms. Jones, 39, uh, Mr. Duroen, 36, uh, with these current charges that we see here uh, and in the area of uh, Garber Street, um, and also identifying that window tent violation. Uh, that's something that, that uh, we've talked about with all of our different law enforcement agencies, with Troop C, with, with all of our different a agencies in the area, being able to crack down on making sure that we get people uh, with the right tinting. And a lot of times they have those tinting because they don't want people to see what's in their vehicle. Well, that, that, that's very true. Uh, sometimes a minor violation uh, leads into something major like this. And uh, it's definitely have a good proactive approach out there uh, to contact our community and uh, keep our streets safe. John, we can't thank you enough for all the work that y'all do. So thank you so much, Captain Chef. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. All right, guys, that'll do it for this particular segment, but don't go anywhere. A lot more local programming right here on Bayou Time. Rouse's Markets is voted best grocery store in New Orleans, best grocery store in Baton Rouge, Mississippi, Gulf Coast, Thibodeau, Homa, Hammond, Lake Charles, Mobile, year after year. Thank you for choosing us best grocery store on the Gulf Coast. Number one. Thank you. Thank you. The number one grocery store. In Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. A million customers a week can't be wrong. Welcome to Rouse's.